If you wanted a transit through Brisbane by road before January 1986, you really only had one option. Now I was fortunate enough to grow up in an era where a kid could still go to work with his dad. My dad was a truckie, so I got to learn the layout of Brisbane from an early age. In this episode, we're going to travel south out of Brisbane following the route that I remember as a kid. G'day, I'm Pete. Just your average Aussie bloke. My father, a grandpa and a husband. So come along and let me show you my Australia. Okay, we'll start this journey travelling past the Camp Place fire station, which will put us southbound on the Story Bridge. Now, random fact according to Wikipedia, there is over 1.25 million rivets in this bridge. It's a random fact. Uh, construction of the bridge started in May 1935, and by October 39, the gap was finally closed, and July 1940 was open for business. Uh, it was named the Story Bridge after John Douglas Story, a senior and influential public servant who advocated strongly for the bridge's construction. Initially, a toll of sixpence was charged to cross, but was removed in 1947. And today, the bridge plays a large role in the river fire display, with fireworks being launched from the top of the spans. Also, bridge climb started in 2005. Now a big thank you to the members of the Facebook page Old Brisbane Album for helping me out with a few of the dates and a bit of direction for this episode. Because before the end of 1972, you could follow the road to the right here, down to the Gabba Five Ways and onto the top of Logan Road. Sometime between July 72 and April 73, access to Logan Road was closed. So I always remember going to the left here and down through East Brisbane. So over on the right hand side of the intersection we have the infamous Broadway Hotel. Construction started in 1889 of a substantial three-storey brick building on the corner of Logan Road and Balaclava Street, Woolloongabba. 
with Logan Road growing into a major arterial and the tram network expanding through to Stones Corner. This was indeed a prime location. The original owner, Michael McKenna, held the property until 1917, when Castlemaine Breweries, currently known as Castlemaine Perkins, the brewers of Forex, took ownership. It changed hands a few more times until 1998, when a Brisbane doctor, Malcolm Neist, bought the property for $700,000. The hotel sat for a while with no improvement until July 2010, when the first of two major fires ripped through the building. It had been left abandoned ever since, with another fire in 2018 destroying most of what was left of the existing building. Days of trying Give up the aim Of perfection Trust the simple ways And let it go I guess if you had anything higher than 3.6 metres, or 11 feet 8 inches back in the day, you would have gone down through Wool and Gabba, turned left into O'Keefe Street, which would have brought you out at this roundabout. Stone's Corner is named after James Stone, who was a brewer of ginger beer back in the 1870s. Stone's Corner Hotel has been on this site since 1888, when opened by Dennis O'Connor as the Junction Hotel. Imagine how busy this little part of Brisbane would have been at certain times of the day. Pedestrians, passenger and freight vehicles and trams trying to occupy the same space. If you have any memories of this journey out of Brisbane, or you remember it a little bit differently, just drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching, please come back next time when we'll travel a little bit further down Logan Road towards the Pacific Highway.